Um, so this is an example of uh, what we call like a trade. So this is just a purchase or a sale of cryptocurrency, just like a sale or purchase of shares. Um, so in this example, uh, and these are like some images from our software as well, from inside Scylla, where you'll see this sort of breakdown. And this is an example where your client has purchased uh, one unit of Bitcoin and they've paid 20,000 Australian dollars to purchase that. And they've also paid a brokerage fee of $20. So when you look at the tax outcomes from this transaction, uh, just like sort of Joyce was explaining as well, um, we're going to record the cost base is the most important thing here. So there's no accessible income from this transaction because all it is is a purchase. But what we do need to do is record the cost base of this one unit of Bitcoin. So the way that we do the, the cost base is we take the $20,000 that was paid plus the brokerage fee, and this will be the cost base for that one unit of Bitcoin. Um, that's what we'll know, how much has the value increased when it's eventually sold. There is one sort of really important trick here. Um, it's more important because it's not always a purchase of crypto with Australian dollars. A lot of your clients will be doing what's called a swap or a crypto swap. So what they do is they take the one Bitcoin, but they actually purchase it with another crypto. So they trade Bitcoin to Ethereum or, or Bitcoin to another cryptocurrency asset. Um, and this becomes a bit more challenging because you need to, you know, there's no market value reference. And what's really important in these barter transactions is that the market value of both the assets involved in the trade, they have to be equal. Um, you have to have exchanged uh, an asset of equal value for another one. Otherwise, there's an undeclared gain that, that also needs to be declared. So in Silo, we're really careful to make sure that we always, uh, the acquisition in the trade and the disposal in the trade always have this equal market value. Amazing. Yep. So let's look at the other really common transaction. Of course, if you've bought it, you're going to sell it at some point. So this is a sale of crypto. Um, in this example, we've taken that one unit and we've sold it for 30,000 Australian dollars. Plus, there's also this brokerage fee that's being charged by the platform. Uh, we work out the net proceeds from this sale by taking the $30,000 and subtracting the brokerage fee. And that's how we get this 29970 So this is basically the resulting value that you, you got when you sold the, the asset, right? Then what we do is we take that prior cost base of 20020 and the difference between the two will be the capital gain. So in this example, the result is $9,950 of capital gain from between the purchase and sale of this one unit of Bitcoin. And this is what eventually would be declared on the tax return. Um, there's a few more steps because the client may have other sources of capital gains, so you have to add them up and subtract them, and then you'll eventually get the outcome. 